Hey there, high tide traders and investors. It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the pursuit of wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news and interviews. Also the channel that was created by a retail investor for retail investors and home to the best MJ community. Today is Tuesday, October 1st, brand new month and a brand new quarter. In this video, we're going to be discussing high tide, getting a lot of questions about this today, why the jump, there was tons of red in the sector and across the broader market as well but high tide was actually a shining star. I think it mostly had to do with the technicals. I didn't see any you know, per pertinent news that would be attributed just to high tide to indicate you know, the, the move today, to indicate why we would see the move today. Uh, I think it was just mostly technical. And uh, like I said, leaders and laggards in the space yesterday, we had uh, CGC running and then today it was high tide. But we're going to take a look at the chart. I'll give my thoughts and opinions on what to expect in terms of the price action in the days, weeks, months ahead. Before we get to it, make sure to smash the like. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff. You'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. And as always, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. You should never buy or sell anything based on anything that I say or write. This is for entertainment purposes only. You can follow us over on X as well, formerly Twitter. Handle for that is at Group Pow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. And full disclosure, I do own quite a bit of high tide in my MJ portfolio. If you haven't seen my MJ portfolio, I just posted a, an update about a couple of weeks ago. You can check that out for my whole portfolio, MJ Holdings, and uh, I give the percentage breakdown as well. So we did have some 15 minute bull flags on deck here on high tide. I mentioned in the power group private community that I wasn't as confident in this second 15 minute bull flag because of the fact that we were extended. So uh, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Leisha in the power group private community said it sounds kind of counterintuitive to what we would think. And you would, you would think at, you know, the first glance, but when you actually think about the logic behind it, it makes sense. So when you have a 15 minute trend change like we did here, right? We had our low, high, higher, low and higher, high, bull flag confirmed. And then we would have been over, or rather uh, overbought on the RSI. We hit the target of 226 to perfection, really. We hit 226, sorry, 227. And then it was a triple top. So once we were unable to break 227, that was a bit of a red flag. And from this move here all the way down at 208 to 227, you get a little bit extended, right? Sorry, it was 203 was the low there to 227. So you're getting a little extended. So the idea behind this is, is generally you don't see, it can happen. It's not that it can't. It's just the odds are that likely when you see a 15 minute bull flag followed by another 15 minute bull flag, generally they don't play out that often. I'd say maybe 20, 30% of the time they don't. And, you know, the rest, they, they, you know, usually get uh, some follow through, some additional follow through. But, you know, you can have bull flag after bull flag after bull flag. Again, that's just not the most likely scenario. So today I said, just be a little cautious on this second 15 minute bull flag because of the fact that we just had one confirm and we got pretty extended on that move. So we're likely due for a bit of a cool off period. And then we also had the EMA 12 and 26 bear cross lining up. So that gave me a little bit more confidence in thinking that it was going to play out. And then, like I said, that triple top there at... 227 was a huge red flag. And now that I look at the chart, we actually have a descending triangle forming here on the 15 minute time frame as well. So we can get, it, get our measured move here from the high to the low and then move that out. And it's right here with our previous fit level as well. So it looks like around 212. So we could be heading to 212 into tomorrow potentially. And then the broader market has been weak. There's been Tensions rising in the Middle East, so that obviously put a wrench in things, kind of put an end to the party, if you will. Uh, but the whole sector was down today. You can see CXXI, CGC, ACB all down almost double digits. And yesterday, CGC ran a ton, right? Look at that move, and then we gave it all back and then some. So in my opinion, it's just leaders and laggards. A lot of people were looking for a reason why high tide was up today. And there doesn't always have to be a reason why, right? It can just be rotation out of leaders and laggards. Like why was CGC up so much yesterday? Well, we had the news that Kamala Harris said, you know, it's time to legalize. And then today there was actually some other news which had to do with congressional leaders. Here it is here. Top congressional Democrats pushed DEA to swiftly reschedule MJ and continue to assess full legalization. So this is great to see. They talk about uh, continuing to assess the potential of just descheduling altogether. We know that 
this was something that was mentioned a lot in the rescheduling comment period as well that most people were in favor of. I think over 90% were in favor of rescheduling, but a lot of comments as well were saying this isn't enough. We need full-blown descheduling. So we have to give the people what they want, but unfortunately we have to crawl, walk, run, and we're going to take an inter, they're going to probably take an incremental approach to it, right? And then if we zoom out here, so on the short term time frame, on the very short term time frame, we were bullish on the 15 minute time frame. Uh, we did have an hourly ascending tri or sorry, descending triangle as well that confirmed back here. And this is one thing I want to kind of make sure everybody's aware of as well is when I talk about, you know, bullish. Okay, so we did have a, a pow algo algo, a pow algo buy alert go off on high tide, which means medium to long term bullish evidence. And then we said we had some downside after that alert fired off. And then I mentioned that we had an hourly descending triangle. Generally, these are a series of lower highs and a horizontal line of support. And they break down more often than not. And the target for that was 188. And we hit a low there of 194. So we came within about 3% of that target. So you can be bullish on the medium to long term perspective, but bearish on the shorter term perspective, right? So the shorter term just means, you know, the five minute chart, the hourly chart, the daily chart. The medium chart would be more like the weekly time frame, and then the longer term chart would be more like the monthly and the yearly time frame. So, yeah, when like something can be bearish on the five minute time frame, hourly, daily, weekly, and bullish on the monthly, right? You can you can be bullish on every other time frame and then be bearish on the monthly, right? You, you could be half bullish, half bearish on those time frames. So, you, you have to really kind of you know, understand the different time frames, right? When something says bullish and it means medium to long term, you need to zoom out. Don't be looking at the hourly or the daily chart even really, right? That's only for short term targets. So on the short term, we're we're pretty bearish. And then on the medium term, we're, we're pretty choppy at the moment. I think we could see a little bit more downside. Like I said, maybe uh, we go back down to uh, $2, $1.88 uh, if we continue to see weakness in the broader market and across the sector. Uh, but uh, m most importantly is the fact that it's still in a weekly uptrend. So we have a low, high of the bounce here at 213. We had a higher low at $1.85. And then once we broke resistance there and the high of that bounce at 213, that gave us the higher high. So we're in a weekly uptrend. Now we have another weekly higher low forming. So key support now is $1.93 USD on the NASDAQ. Because if we lose that, then what do we have here? We have a lower high and then a potential lower low. What is a downtrend? Lower highs and lower lows. What is an uptrend? Higher lows and higher highs. So in this instance here, we could potentially have a lower high and a lower low. So key support is going to be $1.93. If we reject from 236 here, the high of this bounce on the weekly time frame, and we form a lower high and then come down and lose support there at $1.93, then that's a weekly downtrend confirmed. And we're probably going to see that EMA 12 and 26 bear cross as well. It's not looking too hot on the uh, the weekly time frame. Uh, we do have the weekly uptrend still intact, but you know the whole sector was weak today. We have tensions, like I said, mounting in the Middle East. Uh, we could see some healthy correction on the broader market, and uh, that would more than likely be bad news for MJ as well, unless we get some sort of sector news, right, which could also happen. But, uh, you know, I'm still thinking that it's probably going to be a couple of weeks out yet. So not ruling out one more potential flush in the markets and in the sector. And uh, we do have a bit of a head and shoulders here on the weekly time frame as well. So we'll see it's a little early. We're just forming the head now. Um, but uh, overall, you know, on the monthly to the longer term perspective, we're looking just fine. So we're still in a monthly uptrend. Actually, let me let me take a look here. I, I take that back. We're actually in a monthly downtrend. So we have our high our low, our lower high, and a lower low. So we actually confirmed a monthly downtrend, and this is another potential monthly lower high forming. And anything under 272 is just a monthly lower high. So this is this is getting interesting. It's even a bit of a head and shoulders here on the monthly time frame, but I don't think that's the most likely scenario. I think there's too many bullish catalysts on the horizon. And again, we're just early. We're just forming the head here now. And on the bull side... On the monthly time frame, we're very close to seeing a monthly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross. We did have a POW algo buy alert, which means medium to long term. So we're talking, you know, monthly chart. Uh, but this is looking really good here from a weekly perspective. The stochastic just crossed bullish. The, the MACD is bullish as well, and we're well above the 10-week moving average. We just had a bull cross of the 50 and the 100 weekly. We're maintaining that 50-week moving average as well, which a lot of names are still trading below it. Uh, we just had a death cross as well with the 50 above the 200-day. And as that cross occurred, we didn't really see much downside. We're 
actually bouncing off the 50 day confirming it as support. So definitely one of the stronger names at the moment from a technical perspective, uh, hasn't been the best in terms of percentage reward, but as of right now, uh, you know, technically speaking, it does seem like it's set up fairly well here compared to some of its peers. But just a little concerned about the fact that we didn't get much follow through here on this death cross. And uh, we could potentially see a, another lower high on those longer term perspectives and a little bit more downside, in my opinion, we could see into the 180s. And like, for example, if we bring up MSOS, it just had a death cross and look at the downside, it hit lower lows. So if high tide were to do something similar, that it put us back down to around that 180s to 170s. So don't not ruling that out of the, uh, the equation at all. So monthly, like I said, we're still quite a ways. We're pretty close to seeing them cross, but not, let me just get the exact numbers. 202 is EMA 12 on the monthly time frame, and EMA 26 is 217. So yeah, it's getting pretty close. I would say it's a matter of months before we see those cross. So like I said, maybe we see a little bit more weakness over the next week or so. And then toward the end of October, that would make the most sense. You know, we also had the uh, the meeting today with regards to uh, the leadership sh uh, summit here in Canada with regards to excise taxes and standard uh, units and a bunch of other stuff, uh, governing, governance and uh, yeah, regulatory burdens, etc. So we'll see if something positive comes out of that for the industry, which would obviously benefit a name like High Tide. And then, you know, if we get Florida passed, if we get these political campaigns really starting to pump MJ here, over the next couple of weeks leading into the election, <laughs> we're almost into the 20 days countdown. So I think it's what, 33 days right now until the elections. So th things are going to heat up somewhere around that 20 to, to 15 day mark before the elections. I think they're really going to start to pump the ever loving hell out of MJ. <laughs> so like I said, high tide, uh, pretty choppy here for the next week or so, but very, very bullish over the next couple of months and into the end of the year. All right, going into there, it's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth, and we'll see you again on the next video.